A groundbreaking meta-analysis in the British Medical Journal shows that low-carbohydrate diets can reduce hemoglobin A1c, control blood glucose, and even reverse type 2 diabetes. Can you really get rid of type 2 diabetes? Let's take a closer look at that question. I'm Steve Goldring from SimpleHormones.com. I help patients and healthcare providers with easy to understand patient education resources. If you know of a patient education resource, a book, or an article that you'd love to learn more about, drop a comment in the space below and I'll see if I can get to it. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to get notified anytime I post a new review. This review is all about the meta-analysis published in the BMJ entitled Efficacy and Safety of Low and Very Low Carbohydrate Diets for Type 2 Diabetes Remission, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Published and Unpublished Randomized Trial Data. Well, there's absolutely no question that type 2 diabetes is one of the major, if not the major, health crises of the 21st century. Diabetes affects 1 in 11 adults worldwide. It's responsible for 11% of all deaths. Direct costs of diabetes are almost two-thirds of a trillion dollars. It's a number that we can't even comprehend. Type 2 diabetes accounts for 90 to 95% of all diabetes cases. Diabetes is a dietary disease that used to be treated by restricting carbohydrates. Then, after the invention of hypoglycemic drugs and insulin, we've started to back off on the idea of asking diabetic patients to reduce their sugar and carbohydrates and instead have them offset carbohydrates with drugs and insulin. Accepted standards for diagnosis of di type 2 diabetes are a hemoglobin A1c, that's your long-term blood glucose over the past three months or so. If your A1c is over 6.5% and or if your fasting blood glucose is over 126 milligrams per deciliter, either or both of those can qualify you to have a diagnosis of diabetes. A meta-analysis is a conglomeration of a bunch of different studies. The authors basically reconcile all the different data and different study designs and different populations and kind of manipulate everything to make sure that it all fits together. There's an accepted uh, system of deciding how to manage that data and put it all together and decide which studies fit in with the meta-analysis and which ones don't. Here's kind of a long, dry description of a meta-analysis from the National Institutes of Health. I won't read the whole thing. Meta-analysis is a quantitative, formal, epidemiologic study designed to systematically assess previous research studies to derive conclusions about that body of research. Meta-analyses use a bunch of statistics and math that, frankly, I don't really understand, but they match up all the data so that it can be considered as a whole. The basic idea is to try and determine what's the consensus among all these different disparate studies. This particular meta-analysis looked at 23 studies with a total of 1,357 participants. The diets in these studies were divided into three different general groups. Low carbohydrate diets, or LCDs, and that meant less than 130 grams per day of carbohydrates, or less than 26% of calories taken per day. The second group is very low carbohydrate diets, or VLCD. Those are less than 25 to 50 grams of carbs per day, or less than 10% of the calories. It's sometimes known as a keto diet. And then the third group, the control group, were mostly low-fat control diets. The patients included in the studies were mostly overweight or obese at the beginning of the studies. About 61% of the trials included patients who were taking insulin in order to try to control their blood glucose levels. The analysis of the studies showed that after six months, people on LCDs or low-carbohydrate diets achieved higher rates of remission of diabetes, lost about 7.5 pounds more weight than the controls, decreased their hemoglobin A1Cs significantly, and were able to lower blood glucose levels by about 13 milligrams per deciliter. That's as opposed to the people on the control diets, which were mostly low-fat and relatively high-carbohydrate diets. For decades, the standard diet recommended for diabetics has been a low-fat, somewhat high-carbohydrate diet. So this meta-analysis looked at both low-carbohydrate diets and, as I mentioned, very low-carbohydrate diets, or VLCDs. 
The authors make a point that VLCDs are a lot harder for people to stick with over a long period of time. People on VLCDs tend to go off of them more frequently and earlier than people on just low carbohydrate diets. When the data was adjusted based on people who actually stuck to the very low carbohydrate diet, those diets also appeared to do very well in helping with diabetes remission. This groundbreaking systematic review brings a lot of solid evidence to the whole type 2 diabetes treatment and type 2 diabetes diet. The review also makes it very clear that very low carbohydrate diets and low carbohydrate diets had very minimal adverse consequences. Can diabetes really be cured? Well, this study is all about diabetes remission or maybe even reversal. It's probably a little bit controversial to use the term cure when it comes to diabetes. There's always a possibility that if you return to eating a higher carbohydrate diet, your A1C could go up, your blood glucose could go up. There could be a lot of different factors having to do with insulin resistance that may or may not come back but that just makes it the idea of cure to be maybe not the best type of language to use. But this meta-analysis does show that the low carbohydrate diet has a lot of clinical trial data backing it. And so it's a powerful tool against diabetes. If you're a healthcare provider, I'd really strongly recommend that you read through this review and check out the conclusions for yourself. It could have some really valuable information to pass on to patients and help them really understand the benefits of a low carbohydrate diet in relation to their blood sugar and their A1C. If you're a patient, this study could help you as well, whether you have frank diabetes, you have PCOS, insulin resistance or pre-diabetes, any of those situations, you could benefit from decreasing your carbohydrate intake. For one thing, it's free. And for the other, the study shows that there really are very minimal adverse reactions to it. If you'd like to delve more into this meta-analysis published in the British Medical Journal about diabetes reversal through low-carbohydrate diets, Dr. Ken Berry has a much more detailed video about this meta-analysis that could be of interest to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can find out whenever I release a new video. I'll look forward to talking with you again soon.